Yeah, welcome to another video of Juniper Junos Associate course. In this video, I'm going to talk about Juniper Initial Configuration. Initial Configuration is the first step of configuration after purchasing a Juniper device. It usually includes a root authentication, which is required for Juniper devices. Configuring management IP address and SSH or Telnet or web remote access to be able to configure Juniper devices remotely. Configuring host name, domain name, and name server for the purpose of name resolution and configuring NTP server, which is critical to be configured in network devices. Sometimes it is required to reconfigure network devices from scratch. There are two options in Juniper devices to revert back the configuration to default factory configuration or erase the configuration and data and all log files with the feature of Juniper device zeroized, which will be discussed at the end of this video. By default, you can log into to all Juniper devices with the user root and without a password, as we have done in the first video of this course. But the first step that needs to be configured is setting up a password for root user. In other words, Configuring root authentication. Set system and root authentication. The easiest way to configure root authentication is to set a plain text password. As you can see, there are also some other options for root authentication like encrypted password or password less SSH public key. Passwordless SSH public key authentication is especially useful for network automation. Therefore, our next section is dedicated to configuring this topic, Jonos passwordless SSH public key authentication. However, to enable plain text password authentication, we use set system root authentication, plain text password, and then we will set our Password, for example, roika-koda.com. Then in the next step, we will configure management IP address, configuring management IP address based on your network topology is required for remote telnet and SSH access. With the command uh, in the operational mode, with the command show interface tears, you can see the list of interfaces. The question is which interface is the management interface in the device. We will talk about Juniper interfaces in a dedicated video, but just to get a first impression, depending on the device type or device model, management interface can be, for example, EM0, ME0, or FXP0 interface. For Juniper, SRX firewall and MX rotors, FXP0 interface is usually the management interface. To configure an IP address for management interface, we'll use the command set interface, and then the management interface is FXP0 and unit 0, family INET means I'm going to configure IPv4 address and not IPv6 address, and then we will configure IP address, which is already configured, but just to show you, I will configure it again. If you need to configure default gateway for your device to access it remotely, we will talk about static routing in a dedicated video. But for now, you can use the command set routing options a static and then a static route for the destination default and the next hop address for example 201 and then enter if your device is actually srx device the next step is to configure a remote telnet ssh or web access under system services context you can easily enable telnet ssh and also web management access for example with set ssh you can enable ssh access or with set telnet you can enable telnet access the only point is that by default the root user does not have permission to log in to the device remotely you can easily create another user for remote access 
but if you also want to log in remotely with a root user we don't forget to give the permission to the root user for example for the ssh access we give a root login also allow to give the permission to the root user to have access remotely with the command set telnet will also enable telnet access for http or https we set http set web management https for http access we need a certificate if we don't have certificate authority or public key infrastructure in the network then the easiest way is to use system generated certificate we also enable access room management interface which is fxp zero interface in Jonas devices interface fxp zero devices in the next step we have to configure a host name domain name and name server with a set system in the top configuration environment with the set system host name we will configure host name with a set system domain name we configure the domain name and with the set system name servers for example 192 168 1 250 or an external dns server 888 we can configure name server or the purpose of name resolution for monitoring and also for security purposes it is very critical to make sure of the correct time your network devices so with configuring time zone and ntp servers you can make sure of the correct time in your network devices with the set system ntp server you can set your ntp servers for example 194 225 150 and 25 you'll configure an ntp server and with the command set system time zone asia tehran we can configure our correct time zone with configuring cli idle timeout which is our next topic remote session will be automatically disconnected after the specified idle time which is important for security purposes notice that this feature will be configured in operational mode and not in configuration mode so i will roll back all new configurations since i've already configured these features and then in the operational mode set cli idle time mode if it is configured to zero then the remote session will never be expired but it can be configured between one or two a large number of minutes for example one minute and in the last step for any reason sometimes you want to restore the factory default configuration especially if your current configuration fails and you want to reconfigure the device from scratch the command load factory default replaces the current active configuration with default factory configuration notice that it will not replace the current active configuration until you commit the changes therefore you can check the configuration changes with show compare command to make sure of the changes before applying and replacing the active configuration with committing these changes the default factory configuration will be replaced the active configuration or sometimes you have the options to erase Jonas configuration files and all data files including log files to reconfigure the device from the scratch it can be performed with a command in the operational mode roll back zero and in operational mode request system zero rise in operational mode you will receive the message 
warning system will be rebooted and may not boot without configuration erase all data including configuration and also log files and in the case of dual routing engine system both routing engines will be zeroize yes or no but i will not zeroize the configuration